Yeah, fill us in more on the Singularity Net ecosystem specifically and how it solves some of these problems. Yeah, so Singularity Net, we started in 2017 with the goal of making a decentralized platform for AI and both the specific technology and the nuance of the goal have shifted a bit since then, just because both the blockchain and AI worlds have have shifted a bunch since that since that time, right? So the mm-hmm. the original notion in 2017 was okay, let's create a blockchain based platform so that anyone who creates an AI can put that AI online and then they can put it on their machine, they can put it online anywhere, they connect it to the singularity net network of, of other AIs out there, and all these AIs can outsource work to each other, they can talk to each other, they can collaborate solving customer problems, and the, the intelligence of the whole can be greater than the intelligence of the of, of, of the parts, right? And we we rolled this out as a platform, a sort of decentralized multi-agent system for, for AI on the Ethereum blockchain initially, because that was sort of the only one there that supported smart contracts, which are, you know, they're neither smart nor contracts really, but they're persistent (laughs) scripts that that allow secure decentralized uh, control of of distributed software processes. And so we, we built that platform. I would say it was a success technically in, 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 in as much as it went, it didn't, to be honest, get as much traction as we'd like. That we got a bit of traction. And I think blockchain technology didn't mature as fast as we thought it would. So, I mean, you just said super high Ethereum gas costs and slow networks right. and so on. So, right. from an AI developer's point of view, it's like, why would I put my AI on this really slow infrastructure? You know, so people can pay with crypto, but not everyone does, and for philosophical reasons. But that doesn't always override the practical irritation. So, I mean, people people using AI for decentralized finance or something like the platform because they have crypto they want to pay with, and they're already bought into the crypto ecosystem, right? But we didn't we didn't get as much penetration as we hoped in the broader AI sphere for for pretty clear reasons so we pivoted a little bit in 2020 21 toward creating our own projects addressing ai needs in various vertical markets leveraging our 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 decentralized platform and at the same time plunging into building out the whole decentralized ecosystem beyond just singularity net platform right so we we created for example a project called Rejuve that uses the decentralized AI AI on the platform to analyze, you know, biosignals data and medical data that 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 people upload and uses AI running decentralized on singular net platform to tell tell you stuff about your own your own body and your progress toward 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 longevity. And we we created Singularity DAO, which uses AI running on singular net platform to do crypto trading, various sorts of, of, of decentralized finance and a few other projects along along those lines. Something called Mindplex that you, uses decentralized AI to help with that, with decentralized media. So it's more, okay, well, let's, let's ourselves build stuff that shows what a decentralized infrastructure can do for AI because we, we're doing it because we, we grasp the long, long-term vision and then you know then in the last six months we have this whole llm revolution which is fascinating and interesting and we can dig more into that a a little later i mean i think llms are a breakthrough i think they're not yet getting us to agi i think we can enhance them a lot using other AI things that my team knows about, like neural symbolic AI and evolutionary AI plugged into LLMs. But the implication of LLMs for the decentralization of AI and for platforms like SingularityNet are significant, right? Because it it means that it seems like a lot of the 
progress in AI is going to be little apps that leverage large language models and the successors to large language models to do to do things rather than small standalone AI agents. So what 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 that means is okay if you want to make AI decentralized, a you have to make LLMs and their descendants, be them neural symbolic LLMs or whatever, you have to make these decentralized. And then what your whole agent system is doing, it's like an app or a DAP ecosystem of little AI agents that that they may interact with each other in a sort of heterogeneous way, but they're also making a lot of API calls into these decentralized LLMs or LLM successors, right? And that, that's something we've been thinking through quite a lot and trying to build infrastructure for to complement the core singularity net blockchain based multi agent system platform so we we made a platform called newnet which lets you sort of contribute processing power that you have to the decentralized ai network and then in a in an llm context you know you really need a powerful server farm to train large language models but if you're doing fine tuning or you're doing prompt tuning or you're doing learning of the symbolic portion of a neural symbolic large language model system you can do that on your phone or laptop or something perhaps in a way that's centered on your own data which is on that device and we can use nunet to help make that aspect decentralized then then we've launched our own layer one blockchain project called hypercycle which is a ledgerless blockchain. So it goes beyond the, the decentralized ledger aspect of Ethereum and other commonplace blockchains. And again, that's, that's aimed at making it not be a slow and expensive thing to put the blockchain underneath, right. uh, underneath your, your, your AI application, be it LLM oriented or, or otherwise. And so each of these things, NuNet and Hypercycle are their own projects, which we've separately capitalized and sort of spun out of the Singularity Net Foundation, which was the initial entity that that launched Singularity Net platform. And then for the large language model aspect, we've spun off a company called Zarka, whose goal is just to build build some large language model supercomputers, use them to train large language models but on as much of a decentralized infrastructure as, as, as we can, right? So, I mean, we'll use a supercomputer when we have to, but then for fine tuning and prompt tuning and, and symbolic piece, we can use NuNet and Singularity Net to fully decentralize those aspects. But also the core training of an LLM doesn't have to be just on one server farm that one entity owns, right? It could be, it could be split across, you know, Zarka's own server farm, but then a bunch of, say, former Bitcoin mining farms and wanted to put a bunch of their machines into that. And then then we've spun off a company called True AGI, which is oriented toward OpenCog Hyperon, which is a cross-paradigm, like neural symbolic evolutionary AI paradigm, bringing LLMs together with, with, with other stuff, which can then run on this decentralized AI platform. So, I mean, I think what we're trying to trying to think on our feet to make decentralized AI and AGI actually work in this rapidly evolving AI and blockchain land, landscape, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and I've yeah. sort of come to the conclusion, I've come to the conclusion to make decentralized AGI really work. I mean, pretty much we have to launch something that's way smarter than chat GPT. And launch that on a decentralized infrastructure, right? And if, if you do that, everyone will use it because it's smarter. And lo and behold, it also happens to run on this decentralized infrastructure and no one no one will about that fact, even if it's not their main their main purpose for for, right. for using it. I mean just like people are happy to use stable diffusion. They like the fact that it's open source. Yeah. On the other hand, if there was something proprietary that worked twice as well, they'd probably use that. That's right. Even, even though it was, sure. was, was closed source, right? So that, that's sort yeah. of what my focus is now. Like, how do we use LLM, symbolic reasoning, evolutionary AI, all these different things together to make something way smarter than Chat GPT, and then we can roll it out 
on our decentralized infrastructure and then curate an app ecosystem around that, doing all sorts of things, serving different different vertical markets.